Okay, let's finish up with um, the way businesses and corporations ran during this time period. The gross national product, which is the total value of all the goods and services a country and all the businesses and stores in that country produce each year. During this time period, the gross national product grew at 6%. Before this time period, it grew at 1%. So the, growing at 6% is huge. It means that companies made a lot more money. They were able to hire more people. If they hired more people, they were putting more money in people's pockets. And if people had more money in their pockets, they were buying more things. It's a, it's a circle, a cycle. There were new technologies during this period. There were new resources available to companies. And there were new management methods that made companies more efficient. And these three things made companies better ran. New technologies made, it, made them to make incredible products. Um, and often the new resources made them cheaper to make and cheaper to buy. Next slide. Take, for example, Henry Ford and his company, Ford Motors, and the most famous car in American history, the Model T. You can see two different versions of the Model T on your left. T stands for touring. The Model T was the first car to be created on an assembly line where each worker was, does one specialized task. You put the one bolt on the wheel. You do that all day long. But that just meant that you could start at the beginning of the assembly line. By the time the car hit the end of the assembly line, it was done. This method made it very efficient to create cars. And in this method, a Model T, which was made up in Michigan, was made every 24 seconds rolling off the line between 1908 and, 19, and 1927. Henry Ford and his company built 15 million cars, about half of those being Model Ts. And the Model T was only about $3,500. Moving on to the next slide, here's pictures of the Model T assembly line. The work did put a strain on workers because it was tedious work, time, the same thing time after time after time. They used vertical consolidation of Ford Motors, which means they owned all the production, all the transportation, and all the, uh, the mining and, and distribution too. And they sold their cars in their own stores, the, model, the Ford stores. Because they were selling so many cars, they didn't need unions. They were an anti-union company, but they didn't have unions come in and, and unionize the workforce because they paid so well, because they were making so much money. By 1936, Ford Motor Company was the third largest corporation in the United States. And as long as we had this boom, especially after World War II with airplanes, as long as car and airplane manufacturing in this company grew, the U.S. economy boomed. It would come to a screeching halt at the beginning of the 1930s when we talk about the stock market crash next, next class and the Great Depression that followed. All right, that I believe is all. Oh, who was left out? Two more things. Real quick, who was left out of this boom of business? Unskilled laborers were left out, and a lot of times those are African Americans, and family farmers were left out. These will be the first two pools of people affected by the Great Depression and the stock market crash. But that is the end of the lecture, and we will um, continue the, the lecture with the uh, stock market crash next class.